Okay. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to Kinkley's Community of Higher Education and Career, a haven for adventurous souls like you who crave knowledge and exploration. Here we are more than just a community. We are a crew of like-minded individuals united by our thirst for discovery and shared passion for navigating the exciting yet often treacherous waters of career development. Thinkly serves as your trusty map, guiding you through the territories and helping you make informed decisions that will shape your future as as your community host, I, Vijay Sanavane, I'm a global higher education consultant, will be your captain on this voyage. I spend a good considerable amount of time helping students to get into world's top 100 universities equipped with scholarship that can unlock their potential. So, Bakala, today's podcast promise to be an exciting one and we are about to embark on a journey filled with valuable insights, expert advice and real world experience that will empower you to chart your course towards a fulfilling career. Set sail with us and discover the hidden treasure of career success. Let's navigate the ever-changing landscape of the job market together and find the perfect course that will lead you to your dream destination. The possibilities are endless. Have you ever dreamed of waking up, up to the sun, painting the ocean with vibrant colors and then falling asleep under a canopy of stars, twinkle like diamonds scattered across black velvet? We all have that dream. But for many of us, it remains just a dream. But what if I told you there is a profession that can turn that dream into a reality? A profession that allows you to witness not just one, but countless sunrises and sunsets, each one more breathtaking than the last. A profession that takes you to the far corners of the globe, offering you a 360 degree view of the world that changes with every turn of the tide. I am talking about the life of a sailor, of course. And today we are casting off the shackles of landlocked life and setting sail for a swashbuckling adventure with Captain Anirudh Paranspe. He'll be our guide on a fascinating journey through the exciting world of careers in the Merchant Navy. Captain Paranspe will share his insights and experience and answer your burning questions about life at sea and help you discover if this adventurous path is the right one for you. So before we start our voyage, let me take this opportunity to formally welcome Captain Anirudh, a Merchant Navy leader. Captain Anirudh is a senior HSSEQ superintendent, even I'm more curious to understand for all of you, with a company called OSM Thom India Private Limited, a leading shift management company. Captain Anirudh is an expert on matters of compliances, injury, and incident prevention on the ship. Believe me, without his consent, ship cannot leave the port. He's a very, very important man. So, Anirudh, welcome and thank you for your time. I mean, truly appreciate and a bunch of gratitude. Welcome to Thinkly Higher Education and Career Community. Thank so, you so much. Yeah, thank you so much, Vijay. Uh, it is indeed, as you, as I can see back, that it is a, indeed a good opportunity to you have provided to share my whatever I've gone through or done in life so far. 
it's a very good platform to to discuss and help the aspiring people uh, to chart a course okay thank you so 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 starting with you know let me ask you what exactly you do i mean it looks very interesting and you know without your consent the captain cannot you know chart his ship out of the port yeah so what exactly you do okay um uh, hsseq what is that is what you read h stands for health s for safety s for security e for environment and q for quality so that is my my designation hsseq what i do very uh, very interesting question um i am also something called designated person ashore okay so in fact my phone is given to all the ships 24/7 and if it happens um, that i get a call now right now <laughs> i may have to request you to terminate this session and go so that is that is uh, the kind of responsibility i have so any vessel having any kind of emergency uh, they will have to call me one of i am one of the recipients of such a call what i do um i have been a merchant navy captain i have sailed for close to 18 years okay i started as an apprentice and um, over a period of years i rose up in the ranks and finally became a captain and because i have been there done that um i am ashore and guiding the captains the young captains um because as you know ships trade worldwide and uh, they they require a lot of assistance uh, because nobody knows every every rule in every country so they require assistance it's an inter international trade so, and we are ship drivers you know we are navigators so every uh, everywhere they require some guidance assistance what to do whom to ask so they have to ask me <laughs> okay so you are you are yeah i mean you are a good to person <laughs> you go to person you can yes, say yeah yes. go to yeah, go to brilliant, person brilliant brilliant okay so uh, so let me ask you uh, that how many countries you have visited countries okay let me put it in in a measurable figure let's talk about continents okay <laughs> countries is too large a number to to even count here except the antarctica i have been everywhere Oh, i i mean uh, not all the countries in every continent and uh, particularly uh, like the like places like greenland and anybody uh, greenland who would think of going to going to greenland i mean no it's not a tourist destination but uh, i've been to greenland and barring some landlocked countries like switzerland bolivia bhutan mongolia <laughs> which cannot be accessed by sea um most of the places i have been most of the places every continent um and some rivers and lakes because the ships go to the lakes also um you know the niagara fall the niagara fall uh, is is uh, water falling from one lake to the other right and our ships go to those lakes okay it is a parallel canal um close uh, close just besides the niagara fall where the canal is built in such a way that the ship can go from the lake uh, which is a lower lake to the upper lake and come back you know so it's it's a varied experience we go to the rivers like uh, rivers in south um, south america there are many rivers like amazon and river plate in argentina and places like this so very difficult to count if you ask me how many countries but yes continents uh, only one continent is remaining that is antarctica and there is no trade there so it's only for research and things like that which there is there is no commercial activity as such yeah i think yes got it got it got it <laughs> so okay so so now please uh, orient us you know give us a very comprehensive understanding about merchant navy uh, its uh, various career pathways Uh, it can offer and uh, what are the some of the key positions you know one can aspire for okay definitely definitely now the word merchant navy merchant navy means vessels which are used for trade 
carrying cargo from A to B. It is different from Indian Navy. People often get confused with uh, what is what is Indian Navy, what is Merchant Navy. So people often get confused. Indian Navy is for defense. Okay, it's to protect the country. Merchant Navy is to trade, take cargo from A to B. Now there are various type of ships, depending on trade. What the goods which you get, um, see. There is very limited scope that something can be shipped from air. It's hardly, you know, negligible amount. I think uh, what I read, uh, the, the largest aircraft can carry maybe 1,000 tons. If I'm not wrong, maybe some Russian aircraft. But the biggest ship can carry close to 5 lakh tons. I'm talking about such a big quantity. <laughs> or if I have to give you a perspective, uh, have you seen a container on a trailer? One container, yes. one trailer. Yeah. Okay. I had the privilege of uh, asso being associated with a ship, uh, which could carry uh, twenty one thousand five hundred containers. Okay. <laughs> My goodness, that's a okay. mammoth number. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the kind of sizes we are talking about. On a ship, there are usually three departments. Okay. Uh, the navigating department is called the deck department. I come from the deck department and. The head of the deck department on the vessel is the captain. So I, I come from that department. Then there is an engine department. They are mostly a set of engineers. Ship's engine is very, very big. I mean, uh, if I have to give you uh, the perspective of how big the engine is size-wise, physical size-wise, it is about uh, two and a half to three floors. You know, that's the size of the engine. <laughs> And the BHP, uh, it can range uh, in thousands, you know, 21,000, 30,000 BHP. The scooter, for, again, to give you the size uh, comparison, the scooter engine is 11 BHP. <laughs> uh, good car engines have uh, 100 BHP, you know. So, ship is in thousands. So, that's the... So, engineers manage all the work in the engine room. They, they Their background is... Um, mechanical engineers they are they are dealing with machinery they are dealing with engines and pumps uh power generation and things like that so that's one department and the third department which is not a big department it's a small department that department is big on a passenger vessel but on a on a merchant ship that department is called the catering department it's hardly just two people on a ship Average number of people on any given ship is about 20 odd people. With the technology, technological advances, uh, the number of people required is far lesser now, irrespective of the size of the ship. So whether it is 21,500 TU or uh, 1,000 TU, it's, it's about 20, 20 odd people they are at sea. And they are divided between these three departments. Okay. Uh, deck, engine, and the catering. Catering is just two people, um, the steward and the, and the cook. At times, there is a second cook, perhaps a trainee cook, because there has to be a pipeline for people to get trained on board, right? So, there are trainees on, on in all the three departments. Um, uh, trainees on the deck department, training in the engine department. So, that's how, how the structure of a of a, of a generic structure of a vessel is okay. Um, if we talk about the type of ships, it's it starts with dry bulk raw material carriers like the dry bulk. You see this iron ore um, excavated from the mines to oil carriers. There was in the news about about oil recently. If you have seen with the ongoing events, so oil carriers, so there are oil carriers, there are refrigerated uh, ships, there are livestock carriers where which carry cattle, there are car carriers, all the cars which are shipped, you, if you go to one of the Indian ports, you will see port has certain section to where the cars are parked, they are loaded onto the ship. A ship can carry up to say about 6,000 cars, five to 6,000 cars, okay. Ooh. Uh, that is the kind of sizes we are looking at, you know. Um, yes. Uh, so now we, uh, I mean, there are uh, 
we can i can go on on this but uh, yeah yeah i mean yes of course yeah. we will we will deep dive on that yes. side as yes. well but uh, yes. at the same time now i'm also going to take a few questions from our uh, community members okay sure. and uh, one of our community member mohit uh, is very curious to know as to how you kind of in you know what caused you or what inspired you to join uh, merchant navy okay because it's not okay. a very mainstream career people uh, don't uh, often talk about you know that you know i would like to get into merchant navy so what inspired you i mean how you got into it okay so um uh, you always have a role model uh, when you have you want to be something you have some role model right i had a couple of uh, people whom i knew whom i have been seen seen their lifestyle um one of the things which attracted me is uh, to see the world i mean and get paid for it <laughs> to see <laughs> okay so uh, you talked about the sea view restaurant and things like that you have to pay for it right there you get paid for it you see uh, you see sunset sunrise every day it's a daily affair and uh, usually the mess room is close to a window where you see the entire sea and uh, yeah it's a normal uh, daily affair and you get paid for it so um those are the people who influenced me uh, in taking up this path okay there are always pros and cons some give and take um i i was more attracted to the to the takes from it than than gives okay that is that inspired me uh, to join merchant navy see the world here yeah. okay okay great so i mean uh, it's been how many years now uh close to 30 years now um together at sea and ashore so close to 30 years 30 years plus you can say <laughs> okay okay uh, that that that's quite a huge number i mean 30 years is a long time and uh, deepa i wish to know that uh, if you could share some exciting experience uh, you have had you know during your time as a sailor okay so um see you uh, the weather there is um is constantly changing because you're traveling right you're traveling at slow speed but you are still traveling you go from one area to the other so there have been occasions when the weather has been extremely rough you don't get uh, calm weather all the time you you get it's a it's a combination it's like life you know you are happy you are sad you are you, it's uh, different moods you have right same way the sea has moods <laughs> see see is rough sometimes it's um, it's very calm and quiet sometimes so there have been um specifically in winter season in the north atlantic close to the canadian coast east and west um it's not the best of uh, the the areas where you need to you, you like to navigate okay because uh, there is fog all the time okay in fog you can't see you have the radar but you can't see it's cold okay there are icebergs there is sea ice okay the sea is quite rough okay and you are like um, sort of driving in the blind <laughs> okay so that is uh, one area where ah uh, you think oh, am i doing the right thing what is happening is it okay is it safe enough and that is the that is the time you you really Um, are on your toes and you know very very um, alert to see if there is any danger coming ahead so there is one i cannot say that is an exciting but that is one of the areas of uh, concerns um, when you are navigating okay have you ever encountered pirates uh yes i have i have i mean In, uh, all over the world you you must have heard that arabian sea at one point of time was very very bad it is turning out to be bad again for merchant ships but it was rampant because uh, there were somalian pirates and if somebody wants to relate to what uh, my life was uh, they can watch captain phillips it's a good movie yes it exactly depicts the role of a captain <laughs> um Uh, very beautifully and uh, there is some activity uh, 
on the on the on the west coast of Africa. So there are pirates there. We have I have encountered to a lesser degree, not where people are taken as hostages, but uh, yes, to a lesser degree, I have lost some items on board. Uh, but that's about it. No, you no no human injury. That was <laughs> that was a big thing. Uh, nobody taken as hostages. So yes, to a certain extent, yes. Oh, that was that was good. Yeah. Okay. So now let us coming back to uh, you know some of our career related questions. So, uh, what kind of career, or rather, the academic background or a skill someone need to pursue? Uh, a career in merchant navy i mean uh, is it only open for people with a science background is there any scope for non science background people uh, so nowadays you know people i mean student especially they they are very passionate to learn multiple languages i mean will i mean how they i mean suppose someone decide to you know pursue a career in merchant navy and also has a good language expertise how that helps uh, him or her Okay, and now there are two things in merchant navy. There is officer uh, category, and there is something called ratings. Who are more uh, physically involved in uh, in working? Officer means uh, basically they have to have the the skills required for physics, chemistry, maths. You know that those are the subjects which are which are required to become an officer. So. Uh, depends on what a person intends to join finally everybody aspires to become an officer so the best way is to ensure that you have science and you take physics chemistry and maths as your as your subjects don't opt for biology that has no use there um vessel is a floating structure it's all about buoyancy okay so physics is a must <laughs> uh when you go from a to b you have to do some some calculations um some trigonometry because the earth is round it's a globe and uh, of course there are there are equipment for that but you need to know the basics the fundamentals so you require maths and chemistry is required because you are you have carry cargoes you need, you know need to know what the what the details of the cargo are flammability and things like that so one requires chemistry so these subjects are a must um if you are joining as an officer as a rating a rating perhaps they can get away because that's uh, but eventually everybody wants to become an officer so even if they join as ratings they aspire to become an officer it's a little longer path but they can oh good okay so so even if you uh, i mean what is the minimum or the lowest qualification one can join as a rating in the rating it is 10 pass 10 okay. pass ah. 10 pass okay 10 pass. Okay. okay 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 Fine. and uh, ah. yes okay ah uh, so uh, so so in terms of i mean thank you for sharing that i mean in terms of like you know gaining the uh, the, the required qualifications and etc uh, how how one can start i mean you 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 clarified that you know you need to have a uh, chemistry physics and mathematics okay right so what are the different types of qualifications so suppose how i mean is is it something that you know you need to start as an undergrad degree or you uh, need to start i mean your career after bachelor's i mean undergrad degree how it is how how it happens and what kind of colleges or institutes or universities uh, who offer uh, such uh, career path okay so uh, the apex body um, who controls everything about shipping is the directorate general of shipping mm -hmm. i mean one can just google dg shipping directorate general of shipping they can come to that website they are the apex body okay they control the entire shipping industry in india uh, earlier there were private colleges approved by you know this the directorate general of shipping but a um, few years ago uh, there was a formation of indian maritime university okay it is in chennai and uh, they take an entrance exam like a cet okay it usually happens in june and they start the process in march every year and now all these colleges come they are affiliated to the indian maritime university okay and uh, they have their own colleges but they are affiliated colleges also there are some good 
very good colleges but the ratings keep on changing that uh, that that is that is there we can check with the industry but there are some affiliated colleges some campuses um, and it all depends on how much do you score in the cet exam this exam is given after 12th standard okay there is a scope of gra after graduation also uh, but uh, for deck side it is the primary means of entering is after 12th standard because these universities offer bsc in nautical science and diploma in nautical science now ship when you work on the ship it is not only theoretical it is practical also okay so uh, if one is interested in only in theory and academically only something in research and development i think uh, ship is not the place because you have to physically work as well okay uh, you have to apply what you have learned <laughs> in your academics so uh, physical work is there uh the in entry percentage is is about 60% okay and for ratings it is about 40% because ratings are usually they they are more physically they have a lot of physical work um uh, there is uh, age limit also which is given on the website uh, anything lesser than 25 easier to enter um there are two degrees awarded for the deck side uh that is one is diploma in nautical sciences and one is bachelor in nautical sciences bachelor's degree extends to 3 years diploma is uh one year now the thing is there is sea time required after your qualification you cannot just go become a bachelor and start working on the ship no because it's like practical you know? in science you don't have theory you have practicals also similarly a person has to work out at sea uh, for a particular period so for a bachelor he has to work uh, for 12 months and for a diploma holder they have to work for 18 months okay after the end of this is called apprenticeship and same similar structure is for the worry uh, the technical people also this is i am talking about the deck side nautical is deck engineering is uh, engine it's a um, they are usually mechanical or marine engineers okay how the structure is um how, what is the what is the minimum qualification percentage all is given on the directorate general website also the indian marine maritime university website once they do the qualification once they do the required sea time exams are conducted by the ministry of surface transport it's a central government exam one has to pass those exams to become a certified officer that's the first step to become an officer mm -hmm. okay um then you get into uh, the pipeline of officer and finally eventually either becoming a captain or the chief engineer captain is the highest position on the deck side or you can say the ships in charge chief engineer is the highest position on the ship uh, related to machinery so chief engineer is the like the ultimate position he is the in charge boss of all the machinery related activities so that is how this everybody has to start their journey and uh, what kind of engineering uh, courses you usually prefer is it only mechanical or even electrical electronics uh, computer uh, science or okay now mechanical engineering is a preferred um faculty a preferred stream not faculty the stream where uh, because it is all marine marine is very closely related to mechanical there is a position called eto electro technical officer on the ship okay those people should have the electrical background okay because um, with automation with so many electrical fittings parts machinery operation all are electrical or electronics related so the person who handles this on board he has to have the electrical background so be electrical can also do that there is a separate requirement for their sea time as well but they cannot become a chief engineer <laughs> that's okay. the uh -huh. that's the catch right 
Okay, okay. super so, cheap engineer, you require marine, you require mechanical or marine. Mechanical. Okay, okay. Got that, got that. And okay, so just for uh, viewers, uh, I think you mentioned two very important websites. One is DGCPing and uh, Indian Maritime University, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And, yes, and you said there can be private institutes or government institute. What you need to check is whether they have affiliation with the Indian Maritime University. So, so you need to check that, uh, viewers. You need to check that. That's very, very important. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay, uh, fantastic. Yeah, uh, Directorate like General General of Shipping yeah. always they publish a uh, list of institutes approved, list of institutes discontinued, and list of institutes uh, which are which are not blacklisted. I would say, but they are not approved. Okay, so one has to check that before <laughs> taking the step. Okay, okay, yeah, that that's very very important. Yeah. So, and uh, if you want to be on the deck side, then BSc Nautical Science is, is the qualification to go to. Yeah? Yes, or okay. Diploma in That's Nautical Sciences. Yeah. Or a Diploma in Nautical. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, suppose if I'm from a humanities background or a commerce background, then I need not to really uh, think of um, Merchant Navy. Yeah. Uh, very difficult. I mean, uh, well, you can go back, maybe do two years of science or you can do some, you can take a U-turn and do it. <laughs> Or, uh, or 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 a way around or some exemptions, but it is not the normal way of uh, joining merchant navy. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, Andrew. I think that was very very clear, very very specific. Yeah. Okay. So let me then ask you the next uh, uh, question. Um, uh, I think what are the career prospects? Suppose, say, if I'm a BSc nautical, as you said, I've also done the internship part of it, and now I clear the exam. You know, I'm joining a ship, okay? So I'm getting into a contract. And uh, so how, how do I grow? I mean, how my evaluation happens? Okay, uh, do I need to give more examinations? I mean, are they very tough? Because I heard uh, that you need to keep giving some exams, pass some certifications and, uh, you know, all that. So how, how does that happen? Okay. Uh, now it... See, uh, in, in the shipping industry, everybody works on a contract. Very rarely it so happens that somebody has a permanent employment. It is not the norm. It is not the norm. It, it is so that people do not get the next contract. It is not like a contractor over here that he does uh, one project and then he is uh, trying to advertise getting the next uh, project. It's not so. The primary way of employment is a contract. Okay. Um, after you enter the pipeline, uh, you need to rise to the through the ranks. You know, you join as a the lowest is the third officer or a junior officer on deck side, and the engine cadet on the engine side. Okay, where they have to do a certain time because this is it is all about experience. Experience, yes. Um, keeping uh, you cannot you cannot go wrong. You cannot. It's a, it's a huge responsibility. You are carrying cargo worth millions, okay, millions and billions of dollars. Imagine that uh, there is a shipment of all BMW cars or uh, Rolls Royce cars on a car carrier. You cannot afford to have a collision. Yeah. Right? Um, if you have heard the ever given case, uh, it happened. A vessel got stuck in the Suez Canal, and every day there was uh, a loss of billions of dollars. So errors are. Errors have to be close to zero or have to be zero, not even close Correct. to zero. Correct. Okay. So the, the testing of uh, the knowledge of a person has to be very, very good. So in the Merchant Navy exams, that is the reason the percentage of passing, uh, the marks required to pass are very, very high. You need to have good percentage to pass because the error, there should not be any errors. Okay. Um, uh, that's and then you have sea time, you have experience, you give the exam, you rise. This is how the common pattern uh, of examination is. Um, some people do a little bit uh, of uh, they earn a, they earn money a little bit, so they delay their exams. So it is not unnatural to see people who are a little aged and still in the college. You know, um, it's not a site which is unusual in common universities here, but it, there it is very common. But 
Okay. I have tried to earn a little bit more, so to need some urgent family requirements, and then they have thought of giving an exam. Okay. So that that happens in merchant navy because if you have to grow, you need to give an exam. You cannot uh, do away with it unless you know you decide to be at a particular rank, which is not a good idea, I would say. Okay, and uh, along with that, I think physical fitness is very very critical uh, in in the merchant navy, especially if you are on the deck side. Then you have that color blindness or something like that. Yeah, that, that is test. right. That yeah, is right so, because uh, um, yeah, on the on the on, see, I'll tell you. Um, Ship at sea. The reason I am doing this injury prevention as one of my jobs is what happens is uh, the recruitment happens only to the medically fit seafarers. Medically fit seafarers, there is there is a little chance of they falling sick at sea. Okay, very very rare chance. But what happens is accidents can happen, and we need to ensure that accidents don't happen because out at sea or there is no doctor. There's no doctor. Like it is not the life like here. It's uh, anything happens, you just visit the local OPD and you you get treated. In the middle of Pacific, if you if you are sick, there's no doctor there. All all you have to do is on the either on the telephone or the email, send conditions, symptoms, signs. It's not an easy easy job. So there is only medically fit seafarers which can be employed, and Accident is something one cannot afford. It is not. It that is the reason we are trying to ensure that people don't don't get injured. Nobody wants to get injured in that situation when there's no doctor around. Wow, well, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. Please continue. <laughs> please continue. And uh, the ship at night. If you go at night, it's a surprise uh, for everybody. Even for me, when I joined. It is pitch dark. Only there are some signal lights, as we call them. Because imagine you need darkness to see if there is a ship coming from ahead. So imagine that you are driving a car and you have a bulb within your cabin inside the car. You can't see the car in front, right? For the, for you to see the car in front, you require darkness in your driving position. <laughs> Correct. So similarly, on the ship. You require darkness, and the signals are in red and green. Okay, with the red and green, you identify where is that ship going, how is the aspect of that ship. And for colorblind people, they say they 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 see red and green as gray. They cannot differentiate. Okay, that's the reason colorblind color blindness is not allowed. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah. When you what, I mean, what I get get is that it's a it's a rewarding job, but it it's also uh, uh, a very competitive in terms of uh, your skill, your mindset, your mental fitness, your resilience, and your ability to take risk and be very very fit. Yeah. Fantastic. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. I think see, no one knows. I mean, we we always. Look at the other side of it, you know. We are always like you know, like to count those dollars, you know. The ship is on, yeah. But I mean, as you explain, so I mean, the, and this is very very important for someone you know who wish to get into this uh, trade. You know, it's very very critical information. So thank you, thank you for sharing that. Uh, now I just would like to get into some gossip, you know, which. We often encounter when it comes to <laughs> merchant navy or a life of a sailor, you know. So, so we have certain myths like you know it is only meant for mains. But I think that's got busted. I think very recently, just two three days back, uh, we had an all women ship, you know, merchant ship. Okay, and uh, I mean we are very proud to say that you know it's the first lady captain who's navigating that ship. Yeah, so. Women have entered. Okay, that's a very very welcome uh, welcome change. So this myth is is already busted. Yeah, uh, but uh, sailors' life is yes isolated, lonely. Um, merchant navy is a dead end job. I mean, you know, post merchant navy you cannot do anything in life. Um, merchant navy is a dangerous career. Yeah, to an extent, yes. Okay, uh, you have to be away from home for years. 
So how how has been your experience? I mean, you know, thirty years. I mean, it's a long time, as I said. You know how you look at these kind of gossips or certain myths. Yeah, there are many myths um, in and around Merchant Navy. I mean, it is quite natural for people who are not exposed to this career to ask questions, and rightly so. They are they are. I mean, it is fine. There is there is no question which is silly or stupid. It is even right. I would have had I have. many questions about many careers so one of the myths is uh, one of the friends asked me when i just joined that do you stop the ship at night and sleep and then start in the morning okay i mean this is very very simple question i said no we don't do that it's a 24/7 operation we have people on watches uh, in shifts and it it, it it goes from a to b and then uh, one of the myths was uh, i heard that people on the ship are always drunk okay sailors are sailors drink a lot <laughs> okay that is one of the myths in fact you if you ask me um most of the companies have zero alcohol policy zero alcohol nothing oh okay, okay? uh the reason being uh, you need to be alert yeah. you need to you are handling such a, a large piece of equipment um uh, which is costing millions and billions and you don't want to go uh, have any error in that so they are in fact sailors sailors are more sober because they, they are not used to drinking now it's a zero okay and one of the myths is um uh that uh, there is a doctor on the ship there is no doctor on the ship i just clarified there is no doctor so you have to be medically fit there is a test every that certificate is valid for 2 years and uh, when people uh, age they they also undergo the stress test and things like that so medically uh, fit see for us um one of the uh, things is uh, what happens is if something happens you will be evacuated from the ship immediately blah 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 that's that's in- incorrect in the middle of pacific <clears throat> even if the chopper has to fly it cannot it's too deep inside uh, the the ocean both the sides there is no land around and it's not a very it's a very expensive affair to evacuate a seafarer it's not so easy close to the coast yes um, we do that and uh, but out at sea so that is the re- one of the very important reasons that you need to be very careful when you work okay um the one has to follow the process uh, procedures and and wear all the safety gear uh it's not that uh, like i see some people riding the scooter without a helmet uh, it's it's not a very good idea it's it's not required uh, it's legally not right and of course for the own safety it is not right so that is that has to be uh, very very high on the agenda when one goes out at sea yeah i mean thank you for clarifying those i mean i think you know largely we have that you know i mean i think this some of the myths are created from some movies you know for example pirates of caribbean when you see all the sailors are drunk <laughs> okay okay no in 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 this uh, this whole um, uh, uh experience i mean how you see your family support because you know i think uh, yes in to an extent you know you have a uh, few things you know uh, do not do right all the time at home so how you people manage you know uh, such kind of episodes absolutely see um it's i would not say that it's a very easy life because you mm-hmm. are gone for days together um officers uh, the top two of the ship sometimes the top four of the ship are allowed to carry their family okay but not always possible not so every time and particularly if your child is schooling here it is it is impossible so again as i said there are some gives and give and take um, there are some good points um uh, something which is good there like you don't have to commute you are you are working on the ship all you have to do is from, go to from your cabin to the to the watch keeping area navigating area that's the one stair away okay uh here is um, we spend almost what uh, on a given day from uh, about 3 3 hours plus commuting that's one thing there's no pollution zero pollution you are <laughs> having fresh air 
okay sunrise sunset every day uh, it's a fulfilling job what you plan in the morning gets finished by the evening usually but there are some uh, some things which which are restricted you cannot meet your family festivals uh, enjoying festivals if people are of the same nationality is still possible on the ship but imagine if you have four five nationalities for example diwali not everybody on your ship may be knowing what is diwali okay so you have maybe two or three colleagues who are from india and then there is diwali so perhaps three of you can celebrate uh if there is a chinese there is chinese new year which indians cannot relate to something like that so you will not get festivals um your family gatherings a sure like you are going to attend a wedding and uh, some something some celebration here which you cannot attend so that's one one drawback one of the important things to anticipate is somebody close in the family passes away okay that's one situation where it's not easy to come back you know um in the middle of pacific for you to reach the port takes 10 days and somebody you get a new somebody passes away it's not easy to come back sometimes you can't see them because already the cremation has happened and there is one one uh, thing which which one has to anticipate it's not that it one has to anticipate before joining they have to think about all these things positives and negatives yes yes yes, yes. i mean absolutely absolutely um i think this is this this can give uh, i mean huge insight for all the aspirant that you know look at the career you know all pros and cons you know before you venture into it uh, i just cannot stop anirudh but we all are bound by time okay and uh, i think for me and i'm sure for all our audience it was a very truly insightful discussion okay and we can go on asking you question and i'm sure you'll go on answering them as well but we have to kind of you know conclude somewhere but before we end our session what is your final word of advice you would like to share with our listeners i mean though you have clarified a lot but still if there's a, maybe one or two uh, point you know you would like to clarify still okay please thank you okay so it's a it's a fulfilling career and as you said it's it's open for women also earlier it was i have worked with women colleagues uh, mainly from from europe because they they became more aware be, uh, uh, before us so it's a fulfilling career uh, no doubt uh, there are challenges it's nothing is easy in this world um look at the positives it's a good thing to join um and we uh, we can see the world um one of the things which everybody aspires to do i think everybody wants to see the world i have not come across anybody who doesn't want to see the world and uh, it's a fulfilling career later on as you become uh, captain there are opportunities to come ashore also uh, if of course um, um there are some give and take like your priority changes your family is there um you might think of stepping ashore um that is one option of course you have to compromise on certain things uh, like out at sea you might become a non resident you know uh, here you are as a resident so that financial thing will come into play right. but it's a fulfilling career and one should look at it definitely okay so thank you so much anirudh for taking time out i mean and bringing a huge i mean you know um, i mean a lot of experience a lot of information a lot of insights okay and i'm sure this session will definitely help our all our viewers to take a informed career decision okay so don't just look at the dollar part of your or you know becoming globe trotter but you also need to know what it comes with that you know there's always a trade off life is trade off yeah <laughs> so thank you uh, audience for your support and thank you for joining us um uh yeah i mean uh, okay at the same time they say feedback is the breakfast for champions i mean your feedback is very critical for us please do suggest in case if you want to know more um, different topics etc we are open for that and uh, is there anything else we can improve upon i mean you know your 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 feedback and suggestions are welcome so thank you guys thank you very much and gratitude to all of you uh, so we will join uh, next week 
next Saturday at 12.30 with uh, another exciting and informative topic. Till then, goodbye. And thank you, Thinkly team, uh, for your support and for uh, for having this uh, session very seamlessly, you know, without any technical glitch. So thank you very much, uh, Victoria. And thank you much all the support uh, team at Thinkly. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Vijay Sanavani. I'm signing off. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you.